Hello, um, I'm, I'm not at home as you can see, but I am in London. I'm at VidCon, which you'll be seeing next video, but just to kind of time jump round, it's, it'll be a bit wibbly wobbly time who I am, you'll see earlier on today, later in the week. I am heading to see a play today. I'm currently in my hotel room with Liam. Hello. And Barry. Hello. Again. <laughs> You'll meet them in the future. No, you've met Liam many times, but yeah. Actually, you've seen Barry on the channel before. But anyway, so this play, let's just get straight into it. I was surfing Twitter and I found a video on the behind the scenes of a play called All in a Row. I, I wasn't happy with it. I was going to do a reaction to it, but I didn't get time. Long story short, an autistic person is portrayed by a puppet. Pretty dehumanising. Liam also did some research on it and he's found some pretty interesting thing. So, Liam. It kind of first really exploded on Twitter. Um, with, a lot uh, of people so, are not happy. So, you know, there's, so someone here says, isn't it nice when overprivileged, able-bodied people decide to help representation for disabled people by turning us into terrifying and soulless puppets with grey skin to make us more palatable to other overprivileged so, people? So, not only was that the picture of the puppet that you've seen, I'm also going to insert now a picture of the puppet in its original states. I apologise now if you're going to get nightmares. There's also um, a bit of controversy over the writer. Um, oh, this writer, he's an arrogant so-and-so. There was an article um, that was shared and it said, school violated several regulations in autistic teens' death. And it, what did he, he then, do? What did he do? He then, just, he then shared that article with the following text. The difficult task of caring for our most challenging children is an international mess. It's why I wrote Ill in the Road Play. I think it's perfectly all right, isn't it? To, to use someone's death to promote a, a play. Yeah, perfectly fine. I've just realised something that I've missed out. This video is hashtag at gifted, um, but don't, don't worry at all. So I've been given the tickets to see the tonight's performance. It's not going to influence my decision at all. The, the people are fully aware of this. So the National Autistic Society have spoken about this. They, um, they, I'm not, I'm not going to do the whole thing. You can have a look on their Twitter, but basically they do not approve of the puppet. It's, well, who does? Well, clearly the creators at the show. Apparently they do have autistic people on the team. That, uh, mm. Basically, just to summarise then, the story itself is about caring for an autistic child and there's a carer, he's about to get sent off to a residential and the guy who wrote it worked with disabled kids and it sounds like it's come from a good from a good perspective. It's just being turned into a play which I'm not happy about. If the story wasn't going to translate respectfully to a play, why have they turned it into a play? Why didn't they just leave it as the book and that would be it? I'm just going to go see it. I don't think it's going to be a particularly comfortable experience. I'm not going to enjoy it. Uh, I'm glad I'm not paying. Sat in the theatre, already really not happy. Um, they've got a no re readmission policy. Um, you know, when they're doing a show about autism, I think that's the first thing that they need to bear in mind. So the puppet's on stage. I want to go and rip its head off and stamp on it and stuff. I'll probably also put the phone away though now, so I'll get back to you afterwards. There's no interval. Good morning. It's now next morning. Uh, after seeing the show, it's day two of VidCon. Um, let's just say I had a bit of an interesting night's sleep, down to a puppet. Every time I like turn the lights off, I thought the puppet was there. I've been traumatised by this play. My initial reactions, I, I'm just confused as to why the puppet was there. Didn't think it was necessary. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to like let it all toss over in my brain over the weekend and I will do uh, a proper sit down chat on Monday when I get home, which we will flip to now. I'm home. I'm home. <laughs> I don't even know where to start with this. I, I don't. I don't. Oh, I'm still angry. Going along to the play to have that uh, initial little thing happen. And I'll, I'll expand on that, actually. Of course, with any job, you have like your set, your little script um, when you're dealing with customers that you follow. And when they said no, blah, 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 or resubmissions, and I challenged them on it, like, well, if you're going to trigger autistic people, allow them the space to get out if they need to and come back in. And even personally, going into it, I was full of so much anger. Like, my friend Liam will justify this completely. I was sat there, you heard me chunter a little bit, but it was... Well, I'll beat myself, but it was along the lines of, I want to f***ing kill that puppet. I think I also said, it's a good job I'm not sat on the front row, otherwise I'd kick the f*** out of it. I normally like to stay quite professional when doing reviews like this, but no, it doesn't deserve it. If you're basing a play on autism, 
be accessible with the play. There were so many justifications saying that it would be impossible for an autistic child to do that. And even, even when we said, but what about an autistic adult? Oh, well, no, they, they, it would be impossible. It just too many things to go on. From what I saw, nothing needed. Like, it was ridiculous. It, I could have done the role. I know I've said that before on things, but I, I'm serious. It wasn't a challenging thing. It must have been challenging for the actor himself because fair play to him, he, he, he channeled autism quite well, but he had to channel it into a puppet. Because obviously I was so annoyed at the puppet, what I did was I just ignored it and it worked because if I didn't ignore it, I was just, I, I could have stood up and just started swearing. And no one wants that in a the theatre. Uh, so I ignored the puppet and I just watched the actor himself um, give all these emotions and, and how he was acting it. And he, that was enough. I can understand an autistic child not playing the role because, uh, well, it, language, stuff like that, violence. But an adult, no excuse. I think they chose the puppet to try and show the scale of how small and, and timid he was, the, the little autistic boy. The one bit of violence surrounding the character Lawrence, the, the child, was that he got thrown over a sofa. And by thrown over a sofa, you know, when you stand behind a settee and you flop onto it, not, not anything particularly violent. That's definitely something that someone on the spectrum could do. And to, like, go with the age thing, I, I you know, I admit, I don't look 11, I'm 21, but you look at plays like The Cursed Child, they have people in their mid-twenties playing 11-year-olds. Well, for the first year, they turn into like third year or something, don't they? And alternatively, I've never seen a pantomime because no, but I, I always remember seeing all these pantomime posters for Peter Pan and they'd always have a female in the role. And yes, I know that's just to get a certain female celebrity into the play somehow when there's not room. And it's definitely easier to make a, a young, small adult woman to look like a child than a, a, an adult male because we're a bit more bulky. And the hair, that's, well, get a shaver. Curious Incident even has uh, well, how was the, how old was the guy that I saw in it? I think he was about 26, he was playing 15. And either way, I don't think the age 11 was particularly relevant either. If you needed uh, to make the character a bit older, like make him 15, the story still would have worked. It was nothing affected that. One thing I do need to point out, like right now, what I did see was a preview performance, so it's not the final thing. The actors acted well with what they could act with. And I don't blame the actors for this entire scenario. You know, we all need to earn coins. We all need money. Yes, ethics do come into it, but if people need money, they need money. And and the thing is, you don't know what everyone's perspective is like. Like, all the actors might not have a very good understanding of autism going into it and gone, yeah, this seems good. It's a play educating about autism. And you know what? Like, if it was just the puppet, it would be an easy fix. It would be just get rid of the puppet. But it wasn't. There were problems in the script which were just damn right offensive. Liam bought the program and we were flicking through it and there was a constant thing of just the uh, the show's creative team making a statement as to why it couldn't be an autistic person and then an excuse. I can't think of an example right now. I'm sure Liam will have put it in his blog post which I'll link below. But it was just excuse after excuse for things that could easily be solved. Like There's so many things out there that aren't written with autistic people they are written by the parents of, the siblings of, the carers of. And as much as they spend their time with the autistic person, you don't know what it's like. You cannot represent it. The show argued that, oh yeah, we've got autistic consultants like on working with the puppet and stuff. It's, well, who are they? Come forward with your names, please. I'd love to talk to you and understand your personal perspective of it, because it looks like you are in disagreement with not just the majority of the autistic community, but the wider autistic community and even wider disability community. I'm going to refer to a specific example. Uh, you may have seen this one floating around on the internet, but there's a point where the carer has uh, explains a, a bit of a strange theory of his that autistic people are reincarnations of animals. He explains that Lawrence is kind of like a puppy. He bounces up and down when he's excited, he sometimes doesn't obey orders, and he uh, poos everywhere. And the show made a joke of it like, yeah, don't say that in public. And my response to that, 
yeah, don't say that in public. It wasn't funny. This preview performance we saw, was there was clearly a lot of, um, I don't want to be stereotyping and stuff like that, but uh, there were these theatre critics who, oh, 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 those people, you know who I mean. And they were laughing at these things from their upper class privileged positions, but it wasn't funny. It wasn't necessary to the story. Showing the meltdowns was pretty interesting. They had like a, a well, that screen that you saw earlier that flashed and got a bit intense to show the meltdowns and Lawrence made quite a bit of noise. And yeah, it was an accurate description of, of a meltdown, but it seemed that the meltdowns were one of two excuses to move the story along, otherwise it would have just been a stagnant conversation. And I think it potentially was uh, good enough at showing how bad meltdowns can be, maybe. The whole thing was just uncomfortable. So I, I, my attitude before it was, oh, I want to rip the puppet's head off. But my attitude after it was just just throw it in the bin. But over the weekend, as I thought about the, the play even more and after being haunted by the puppet in the night, uh, I, I, I want to physically destroy it myself and I'm not a violent person but I would very much enjoy ripping it apart. I also just didn't get the point of the play. There was no arc, there was no new discovery, like Lawrence was a very one-dimensional character and I know he was representing one part of the autistic spectrum but it was the stereotypical part and it's the part that it always goes for and all of the comedic devices were, were taking the mick out of autism. It wasn't laughing with, it was laughing at. You know full well I'm not someone who's deadly serious about everything. I do like to take the mickey, especially out of myself. And there are autistic traits of mine which I will happily lay into all the time, but there are certain ones that you just, you just don't touch. The other thing that just annoys me so much about the play as a whole is the arrogance surrounding it. Every time they've been challenged on something, they're just constantly coming up with excuses and going, oh no, it's fine because of this. No, it is not fine. You have made a mark on the autistic community, one that is one of the most noticeable things in many, many years. Like, even Atypical wasn't this offensive, and I hated Atypical. For the first series, I quite enjoyed the second series, but you know what I'm saying. Apologise to us. Apologise to us all. Anyone who is offended. I'm talking directly to Alex Oates. Yes, I am tweeting this to you. I hope you watch it and please, if you have watched this, you at home, tweet it to him. Um, I'm also going to tag the cast. As I said, I, do, I don't hold it against the cast. I would just be intrigued to see if you've got any further thoughts on it. I know you're in this job, so you may not want to say anything on it. That is fine. But this is where we stand now, isn't it? We we've got this thing that could have been a great opportunity. And do you know what? That's what upsets me the most. This was an opportunity to show autism on stage. It's not something we get very often. Yes, we got the Curious Incident, and yes, that is incredible. And yes, I'd still like to go to National Theatre. Please respond to my emails. You think I'm joking about that? I'm, I'm not, I've not heard anything in like two weeks. The guy who wrote it came from a background of care. He could have given real insight into the world. He could have consulted with autistic people and used the opportunity of taking it to stage to educate a wider audience to really do something something incredible in the world but no what has it done it's angered a lot of people but let me say one thing that has come out of it in my time of being diagnosed autistic and being present in the autism community I've not seen anything like this before in terms of people uniting to go at something like because there's often really big divides in the autism community but I've seen everyone join together on this well vast majority I hope the show closes down before it's run. It's only open for three weeks so I can't actually imagine that happening but if we do get it done that's something that will just be an incredible victory. We as a community are uniting, we've got our voice, we can be heard, we have got feelings believe it or not, we're not all lifeless puppets. What would be even better than an apology would be the opportunity for someone, I'm not a talented writer, I couldn't write a play, but Southwark Playhouse, go on, put on a play that has been consulted by autistic people that's going to make a difference. If you are a writer and you're autistic, um, I don't mean just like you've written a few stories in your bedroom. No, we can get this video everywhere. Let's get someone actually uh, who's a proper writer. Come forward with your skills and come up with a story. Southwark Playhouse, I think it's fair for you to host this. And, oh, we'll use four cast members and let's have them all be played by autistic actors. Cool? That's the big dream. But the minimum I want, I just want an apology. I want an apology from the writer, apology from Southwark Playhouse as well. 
shame on you, the people that have made the choices that have really not reflected the autism community well enough. This could have been so great, but the puppet, the ignorance, just needs to be gone. I could go on forever, I really could. I don't feel like I should say this. There's a relaxed performance on Saturday. That's nice of them to put on a relaxed performance. And so that Playhouse, I have known to um, have done relaxed performances in the past and from what I could find on the internet, they've been good, um, accessible wise, so we'll give them that. I'm not saying to go and see it. I titled this video, Boycott It. I hope this has been a real lesson for the world, really. We are not people that can't communicate and can't express our emotion. Yes, we may have difficulty doing it, and yes, to varying degrees, but we know what we want, and we know what we don't want, more importantly. Ableism has got to stop, and that is what this show is, ableism. Please leave a comment on your thoughts of the show, uh, as in, not, not if you've gone to see it, if you have gone to see it, you know, join together, autistic community, leave me comments in the comment. Please share this video, get it seen by people. We want it gone. The more comments, the more tweets we can get about this subject, use hashtag Puppetgate, that's the thing that everyone's been using. I'm even using hashtag actually autistic, which I've been against in the past for reasons which I'll go into in another video, but I'm using it. We all need to unite in this situation. Thank you all very much for watching this video. I shall see you tomorrow with a much lighter video. Bye.